Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we reflect on your love and your grace and your mercy, as we think about what it means for you to be our God during these times, we pray for your Holy Spirit's help. Open up our hearts and minds to hear from you. Transform us to be people who are people of hope living in this world. And may our reflection on the texts that we have for today and other Bible verses give us an insight not just into who you are, but our future, our future with you, and also our life on this earth. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Today we continue our sermon series, God, COVID and Life. And we're focusing on living hopefully amongst the fear. Hope amongst the fear. There's a story that goes back many, many years to a, a town in America where the town was destined to be damned. So the whole town was going to go under. And they had give, been given notice, but they had, weren't told how long it was going to be. And so for year after year, that the people in the town waited to be told they had to leave. Well, there was two brothers who owned two different houses in that town. One brother was the ultimate pessimist. He thought, what's the point of looking after his house? And he just didn't worry about it. And so you know what happened. It, it eventually disintegrated. It went, it decayed. The other brother, on the other hand, he kept his house nice and clean, the lawns mowed, he painted, he, he made sure the house was kept in good condition. And his other brother, who was a pessimist, said, why do you do that? And he says, ah, oh, I'm doing that for the guests that will come. I'm doing this for the people who visit. I'm doing that so people can enjoy this place while we still have it. And that's a reminder how one person living with hope lives compared to one person living with despair. Now, during this time of COVID, we've, we can see many people living in many different ways. I invite you to think about your fears. What fears do you have, especially as a result of COVID? Now, if you read the scriptures, you'll probably remember from time to time, it says, do not fear. God says to us, do not fear. That doesn't mean our fears are not real or the things causing our fears are not real. But it's an encouragement to look elsewhere. You see, the threats and dangers are part of life. The impact that fears have on our life, in fact, reflect what we value. There are some people who are so paranoid about getting COVID, so paranoid that they are not going out of home at all, not touching it. They're wearing gloves, they're wearing masks, they're doing all the right things, but they're doing more than that. And they are so worried about getting COVID. And when you listen to them, their value is their health, their life. And they're not worried about any other, anything else. But what fears do you have, especially as a result of COVID? Here are some of the fears, fears that I've come across as I've talked to people, as I've listened to people. There's fears about losing faith. You know, there are some Christians who think that this is a big conspiracy against the church and they're so worried that whatever happens, we're going to lose faith. Well, we can gain some encouragement from history to show that when pandemics happen, when problems like COVID have occurred, faith has still continued and still played a role. Of course, there is the fears that some people have is, will I have a job? Others is, is COVID being used for another purpose? In other words, yes, we've got COVID and then we've got some restrictions, but is it being used for another purpose? There's others who are concerned about their health and others concerned about the health of others. Others have fears about their freedom and rights being taken away. Some have fears about their finances, and that's a really big fear because can I afford to pay bills and along with that comes the fear of will my reputation be destroyed and there's others who have fears that they'll never see their family or friends again fear during this time of COVID is a real thing it's a thing that all of us are experiencing there are some things that we have fears from 
And if we really be honest with ourselves, there'll be a number of things that we're fearing. So I ask you again, what are those things that you are fearing? And keep in mind, be honest with yourself. Be honest with God that this is what you fear. Now, how do we respond to our fears? Well, some common responses to our fears is to put our heads in the sand, to say, my life's all right, oh, these things are not going to happen, they're going to happen to someone else or something else is going to go wrong. It's a bit like the, the teenagers who go out in the car and don't put their seatbelts on or ride on the top of a car thinking they're immortal. Well, during this time of COVID, I'm hearing some people who are not taking advice, not listening to government advice, doctor's advice, the advice that comes through the churches and other organisations. And they've stuck their head in their sand and just tried to continue on with life as if COVID and the problems it brings doesn't exist. Then we have others who want to just fight it head on, who think they have all the knowledge and information and, and want to confront this COVID situation head on. And then we have others who are going to run away from it. And then we came across a couple who had come to Sydney and they'd been here for a few months. And then we got locked, they got put into lockdown and they'd only been here for you know, a, a couple of months and they said, look, we're going, we're leaving this place, we're getting away from this COVID. Well, they've gone to Queensland and before they even got to Queensland, COVID had made its way there. What we're looking at today, what we're going to explore a little bit today is the fact that God gives us a better response to our fears than putting our head in the sand, than fighting it head on or running away. And the first part of dealing with our fears in life, whether it be COVID or anything else, is to have a, a perspective that will help us during times of fear, is to have a clear perspective of, that, will, that will help us during a, any time of fear. The truth is that we should always remember that threats and dangers exist. If you look throughout the New Testament, particularly the epistles, many of them are writing in the context that there are threats and dangers. However, not only do threats and dangers exist, but God's love always exists. God's presence and love always exists, even when we're confronted with dangers and threats. Listen to Romans chapter 8, verse 38 to 39. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes, threats and dangers do exist for us. But there is something far more powerful, far more greater far more sustaining, and that is God's love. You know, in countries like Australia, we're fairly fortunate because we've been able to practice our faith freely for many years without, without many challenge to what we, what we do or how we do it. Some churches have really found this time of COVID very threatening, threatening to their faith. But let's remember, God's love has not diminished. In fact, a number of other churches have found creative ways to continue worshipping like we have through live streaming, to continue bringing the gospel and sharing God's love and message and reminding people that God is always present in their lives. And if you go though overseas to some countries where you could be jailed for trying to share the gospel and you sit and listen and hear the stories of those Christians you hear that they know God's love and presence is still available, still around them, even though they've got those troubles and difficulties. And that's a perspective that we should live in during this time of COVID. Yes, that threats and dangers exist, but so does God's love. Another part of this perspective is that we, as a result of that, we should focus on God and our relationship with God. During this time of COVID, in fact, in all parts of our life, this should happen. But especially during time of COVID, it's important not to be consumed about the problems, the issues, the difficulties that COVID presents. I'll be honest with you, I get frustrated that we have this changing dynamic when it comes to COVID and the regulations. As a leader in the church, I'm constantly looking at those of how we can 
work with those to make sure you and others can be fed God's word and hopefully we can recommence worship in the near future. Now, and sometimes that gets to me, gets me down. However, what I'm thankful for is that when I focus on God, the burden of those things lifts. So a perspective that we should live with that is helpful for us during this time of COVID is to focus on God and our relationship with God. From Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, just as Joshua is taking, taking the leadership mantle from Moses and Moses is now dead and the Lord is giving that and encouraging Joshua, he says this, I have commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And something similar is in our verse of the week, which says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I'll uphold you with my righteous hand. The difficulty that we get into is when we think God's going to fix all our problems on earth and it doesn't happen and then we lose faith. But our perspective should be on something else. Paul Gerhardt, a German pastor, many years ago, um, was going through troubles and difficulties. And as a result of those troubles and difficulties, he was, him and his family were forced to leave their town and the house they were living in. And that night when he finally got to the, the place where somebody had given him a place to stay, he was in despair. He was depressed, he was upset, he was, felt alone, felt deserted. But he had a ritual and that ritual was to spend some time with God. And so he went out and prayed. And he says the burden was lifted as soon as he started to focus on God. He started to put his problems and perspectives into, his problems and difficulties into a perspective, a perspective that God is with him that God loves him, that God has something better to offer. And yes, these things are real and that God is with him during those times. And as we discussed last week, we can lament with God about them. But he, the whole burden was lifted. And so that leads us to another important aspect of this perspective that is helpful for us as we live during these times of COVID. And that is eternal life is our main perspective, which has an, then has an impact on our earthly life. So it's not that our internal life, we just look forward to that and we don't worry about anything on earth. But we look forward to the eternal life and that's the most precious thing that we have, a gift from God that has come to us through Jesus Christ's death and resurrection on the cross. And if you think about it, when Jesus was on earth, he showed us a good way to live where everybody had fears and problems he knew he was going to the cross. He lamented with his father. But he was obedient. But he also, when he went to the cross, he lived with hope because he knew the resurrection was coming. And so for you and for me, that story, which is a real life event that changes our life, should also impact our perspective. That we have this gift of eternal life that God has given us that we can look forward to, that is the most important thing in our life. It's the most important thing in our relationship with Jesus. And as a result of this internal life, we should also remember that it does have an impact on how we relate to others, how we live in this world, how we respond during times of COVID. And Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, gives us an insight to this way of living on this earth that has been affected by our eternal life. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one of mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking for your, out to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. That's the heart of God. That's what God has done for us. 
He's looked out for your interest. He's looked out for my interest. That's why Jesus came to earth. Because he wasn't looking out for his own interest. He was looking out for our interest. And as we live on this earth as his, and I heard this week, his embassy, his ambassadors, his people who bring his love and hope into the world, that's the call that we have to live. To live with a perspective that we have this great gift of eternal life which also affects our daily life, our earthly life. And so an important aspect of this, if we're going to have this perspective, an important aspect is for us to be aware of God's presence and action because that will help us respond well to our fears. Be aware that God is always present, always active in the world. Our problem is we don't always see it. We don't always sense it. In fact, sometimes we allow the fears to overshadow. We allow the dangers and the threats to overshadow. We allow the disappointments in life to overshadow. Can I encourage you, and it can be difficult, but can I encourage you when you have a a negative life, when you have things that are not going well, to dwell in the presence of the Lord, to be in God's presence. And a clear way to that is to just take some time to reflect on scripture. I remember quite a number of years ago, I was going through something quite difficult. And I just grabbed the Bible and went out in the backyard and read scripture, read it slowly and just listened. I can tell you, I didn't change automatically with a big happy space and jumping up and down and everything was great. But I know that had an effect. It helped me start to see things differently. Well, think about our gospel reading today. Think about the disciples. They've had the disappointment in some ways of Jesus' death on the cross. But not only that, these group of men who had followed Jesus are now facing threats to their own life. Listen to what happens. On the evening on that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Every day, there is a plethora of news about COVID. Most of it is bad. Most of it is not helpful. Most of it is either bad figures or people blaming each other or people trying to pick holes in a particular politician or another politician or people criticising the government's actions or people criticising somebody else. And so if we only listen to that news, we're going to continue to build this anger, resentment, despair. And occasionally amongst it, there are some good news of things happening. But when we listen to God, that brings us to a place of having some peace, some peace amongst us when we're in God's presence. And so I'd encourage you to to be very deliberate about this, to be very intentional, is to be open to being in God's presence every day, spending time in prayer, reading scripture, talking to other Christians about life and faith are three very helpful ways for us to be in God's presence, to gain God's perspective, to think outside what others are and to see that God is not just a God of rules which many people expect, but a God who is present and loves us despite our difficulties. Could you imagine the joy of the disciples in that room, how that changed their perspective from being downhearted to, wow. For us, as we live amongst the fear, an important thing is to always be in God's presence. Now, in some ways, God is always present, but for us to recognise that, to see that, to, to be in contact with God through the scriptures, through prayer, through relating to other Christians. so that God can speak his words of love and hope into us. But not only that, so we are prepared to go into the world to bring hope and love. 
You see, being aware of God's presence helps us respond well to our fears. It helps us to respond well to our fears by asking questions is, what does it mean for us to trust God in this situation? What does it mean for us to trust God in any of the issues that come up as a result of COVID? I'm not a doctor, so I don't want to give medical advice, but I've had a number of people who have asked me about is vac- taking a vaccine as a Christian okay? Well, one very legitimate and respected thing from the church's perspective is that vaccines are a gift from God to us. They're a gift from God to us to help us, to heal us, just like doctors are, just like other people who have cared for us. So what does it mean to trust God in that situation? Yes, I know there are some legitimate concerns, but we need to talk those legitimate concerns over with the right people, such as doctors for health reasons, or people within the church. Secondly, another question to ask in responding well to our fears is, how might I respond in a way that brings glory to God? How might I respond in a way that brings glory to God? And when I say brings glory to God, bringing glory to God doesn't mean putting other people down, but about highlighting that God's at work through them. That I'm thankful for the governments and the work that they do. You'll notice in our prayer time, we constantly pray. We pray for politicians. We pray for government and business leaders. And that's because we recognise that these are gifts from God. So in your own life, I'd encourage you to think about how might I respond in a way that brings glory to God and not brings despondent things to people, not discourages people to have a relationship with God. And the third question that helps us in responding well with our fears is how might I respond in a way that brings love and hope to others? Remember what Jesus said to his disciples in that locked room after he brought peace to their lives as a result of fear? As the Father has sent me, now I'm sending you. Likewise, Jesus has sent each of us into the world. Each of us with a message that he loves the world. Each of us with a message that there is something better than this world. See, the problem for many people is they get fixed on things that are in this world whether it be physical things or whether it be things attached to this world, such as family, things like education. They get obsessed with ideologies from this world. And they get disappointed when they get torn down or taken away. But we do know that the gift of eternal life is not going to disappear because it's been secured by Jesus. But this is also a message that we can share with others. There is something better to look forward to and this has been made possible because of Christ. And so as we live amongst fears, live with with Christ so you will live with hope. As 1 Peter 3, verse 15 reminds us, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who will ask you to give the reason for the hope that you have. For us to grow in hope, we need to be in the presence of Christ. Because when we're in the presence of Christ, we can see that the fears, the things that are bringing fears are not things to be paranoid about. Now, it's true that some of the things that are giving fears will continue to exist around us. but are they going to destroy eternal life? Are they going to stop us having a relationship with God and receiving that best gift of all? So what does it mean for us to respond hopefully to our fears? Well, first of all, let's respond hopefully to your fears by living knowing that God is always loving you. It can be very testing, very trialling, when life is, go, is a mess, when things are going bad, when you have major disappointments in your life. And the risk is that we can think God doesn't love us. But take heart from what Jesus says, from what Paul says, through God uses Paul to say to us, 
that God love us, that nothing will separate us from the love of God. Second thing, respond hopefully to your fears by treasuring God's gift of eternal life. Allow the gift of eternal life to put everything else in your life into perspective. Allow the gift of God's love for you, which brings you to eternal life, brings you to a place where there'll be no more suffering, no more pain, no more death, no more dying. Allow that to be what gives you a perspective of everything else. And then allow that gift of eternal life to shape how you live on earth, how you live not for yourself, but for others, how you live to take the vaccine, if you're taking the vaccine, not just to protect yourself, but also to protect others. Thirdly, respond hopefully to your fears by living amongst the dangers, being shaped by Jesus and his mission as you do so. And as you do so, bring hope to these situations. As you live amongst the dangers and the problems, not just of COVID, but of this world, be shaped by Jesus how you respond. Don't, shape from an, don't be shaped from an earthly perspective. Don't gain your wisdom on how to deal with a problem, how to deal with sin from an earthly perspective because often that means cutting people off, having nothing to do with them, not caring for others, speaking the law heavily into people's lives. Rather, be shaped by Jesus. Bring his hope to people comfort them. One of the things that I'm, I've got a very special blessing to be involved in is to be involved in funerals. Funerals with people who, and help, get them, help them see that there is hope beyond this earth because of what Jesus has done on the cross. Likewise, as each of us, as we live, we have an opportunity to share God's hope, to share God's hope, to be able to be able to speak about the love that God had for us, to not let the problems of this world burden us or overshadow us. Yes, we may have to respond to them and we do, should respond to them in responsible ways. But we don't have to let them consume our mind and consume all our thoughts. Because we have Jesus who gives us a different perspective on how to live on this earth, but also what to live for. That leads us to this last point. Is responding by responding to our fears in ways that show God's love to others and to show that we love God. And that means being people who worship God regularly, even if it's in different ways, even if it's ways we're not so comfortable with. You now, one of the challenges that we've had in COVID is we've had people who have said, oh, I'm not worshipping online, I'm not doing stuff online because it's not how we do it. Well, that's been an opportunity missed for some people. But it's also been a fact of not willing to worship God on a regular basis to show God's love and praise. And then the other temptation has been, oh, we only do things for ourselves. But remember, we do a lot of these things for others. I remember when they first started to encourage wearing masks and taking the vaccine, the comment was made, you're not just doing it for yourself, you're doing it for others. And one of the major medical doctors said we'd have a far easier time if we could prove that wearing a mask would mean you would never get COVID at all. And that's not the truth. The truth is... And the truth is that it will help protect us to a degree and it will help protect others. And so many of the actions we take as Christians is not just thinking of ourselves, what we like or don't like, but is to think of how does this affect others. And so as we live, let's be people of hope. Let's be people who live with hope in this world. Not because everything's going spectacular for our lives, but we have this insight that we have a future with God that has already been secured for us. And so I'd like to end with Romans chapter 5, verse 2 to 5. 
and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, but God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. I pray that you live as a person of hope. I pray that you live in Jesus' presence so your hope is built up and you are strengthened by the, the hope that he gives. And I pray, I pray that others that, that are in your life may see the hope of Jesus through you. Go in his peace and go with his love. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful gift of life eternal that gives us hope. We pray that as we live on this earth, we reflect your hope in the world, that we reflect that there is something better to come because of what you've done for us. Heavenly Father, pour down your Holy Spirit on us. And when we are confronted by difficulties and challenges, help us to bring these to you. Help us to respond to these in a way that brings glory to you and brings love to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.